Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today's topic of discussion is vein pumps. Our objective is to examine a common hydraulic pump known as a vein pump. We'll examine its principle of operation and the internal components that make it function. This lecture operates under the assumption you've watched the hydraulic pumps and gear pumps lectures, both available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. Recall that three types of positive displacement pumps are commonly employed in hydraulic systems, gear pumps, vein pumps, and piston pumps. Regardless of their type, pumps can be classified as fixed or variable displacement pumps. A fixed displacement pump, as the name implies, is incapable of varying displacement per revolution. A variable displacement pump, in contrast, uses movable internal components to selectively increase or decrease displacement per revolution as required. Gear pumps use a pair of equally sized meshing gears to provide pressurized flow to a hydraulic system. All gear pumps are fixed displacement pumps. Vein pumps can either be fixed or variable displacement pumps, depending upon construction. A vein pump uses a slotted rotor and extendable veins that scrape the inside of a cam ring. A fixed vein pump keeps the relationship between the rotor and cam ring constant, whereas a variable displacement vein pump varies the position of the cam ring to vary displacement per revolution. Piston pumps can either be fixed or variable displacement pumps, depending upon construction. A piston pump uses an angled plate to position pistons inside a rotating piston block. A fixed displacement piston pump keeps the angle constant, whereas a variable displacement piston pump varies the angle to vary displacement per revolution. The intention of this lecture is to examine the internal construction and discuss the principle of operation on vein pumps only. Other lectures examine gear and piston pumps. Vein pumps can either be fixed or variable displacement pumps depending upon construction. A fixed displacement vein pump cannot change the quantity of fluid introduced per revolution of the drive shaft, whereas a variable displacement vein pump uses moving internal components to modify the quantity of fluid introduced per revolution of the drive shaft. Flow rate is a measure of volume per unit time, and flow rate is the principal factor that influences actuator speed in a fluid power system. Flow rate is the product of displacement per revolution times rotational speed. This calculation ordinarily necessitates a unit conversion since displacement is customarily expressed in units of cubic inches per revolution and flow rate is customarily expressed in units of gallons per minute. Displacement is often referred to on pump data sheets as CIR, which stands for cubic inches per revolution. For fixed displacement vein pumps, this relationship suggests that the only way flow rate can be varied is to increase or decrease rotational speed using a variable speed prime mover, the classic example being an electric motor with a motor drive. For variable displacement vein pumps, this relationship suggests that the rotational speed of the prime mover can remain constant and displacement per revolution can be modified by moving internal components to vary flow rate. As discussed on the hydraulic pumps lecture, accurate flow rate calculations must take into account two important factors at increasing pressures. One, decreased displacement per revolution due to increased leakage, and two, decreased rotational speed of the prime mover due to increased torque requirements. A graph of volumetric efficiency or flow rate at different pressure requirements provided by the pump manufacturer would allow a technician to accurately predict these influences. If we were to neglect these annoying pressure-induced details, given a fixed displacement vein pump with a displacement of exactly 0.5 cubic inches per revolution, driven at exactly 1800 RPM, we would expect it to produce a flow rate of 900 cubic inches per minute, or roughly 3.9 gallons per minute. In contrast, a variable displacement vein pump with a displacement value fully adjustable inside the range from 0 to 1 cubic inch per revolution, driven at exactly 1800 RPM, could produce anywhere from 0 up to 1800 cubic inches per minute, or roughly 0 to 7.8-ish gallons per minute. If this variable displacement vein pump was to produce a comparable flow rate as our previous fixed displacement example, displacement would have to be adjusted to exactly 0.5 cubic inches per revolution. Vein pumps, in addition to being categorized as fixed or variable displacement, can either be unbalanced or balanced. 
We'll examine both configurations, starting with the unbalanced vein pump, since it's the easiest. An unbalanced vein pump features an off-center rotor that spins inside a cam ring. The rotor has slots cut into it, into which veins slide in and out of. Some vein pumps passively rely on centrifugal force to sling the veins outwards, whereas others have springs that actively do so. Given the rotor is mounted off-center and the green bottom port serves as an input, and the red top port serves as an output, consider how an unbalanced vein pump executes the stages of a positive displacement pump. As the rotor rotates counterclockwise, note the inlet port sees a region of increasing volume. This half of the unbalanced vein pump would therefore be performing the suction phase of a positive displacement pump. The extended veins serve to provide a clear and definite separation between the inlet and outlet ports, characteristic of positive displacement pumps. Oil trapped between the veins and cam ring is brought around the outlet port and deposited in a region of decreasing volume. This half of the unbalanced vein pump would therefore be performing the compression and exhaust phase of a positive displacement pump. And then the process would repeat itself. Note if the relationship of the rotor and cam ring are fixed, this makes this a fixed displacement unbalanced vein pump. If however the relationship of the rotor and cam ring can be varied, this makes this a variable displacement unbalanced vein pump. Consider a cam ring positioned by a spring on one side and a piston on the other. If the spring exerts more force than the piston, the inlet port still sees a region of increasing volume and the outlet port still sees a region of decreasing volume as the rotor rotates. With the rotor in this maximum off-center position, the variable displacement unbalanced vein pump provides maximum flow. If, however, the piston starts exerting increasing force, note that the cam ring shifts and realigns the rotor to a slightly more centered position. The inlet port still sees a region of increasing volume and the outlet port still sees a region of decreasing volume. However, given less volume differential, displacement per revolution has decreased. With the rotor in this slightly off-center position, the variable displacement unbalanced vein pump therefore provides reduced flow. Finally, if the piston exerts equal force as the spring, note the cam ring shifts and realigns the rotor to a perfectly centered position. The inlet port does not see a region of increasing volume, nor does the outlet port see a region of decreasing volume. The centered rotor therefore serves to essentially destroke the variable displacement unbalanced vein pump to provide no flow. The terms eccentricity and concentricity are sometimes used to describe variable displacement unbalanced vein pumps in various states. When the rotor is fully offset, maximum flow is achieved and the rotor alignment within the cam ring is eccentric, meaning differently centered. In contrast, when the rotor is fully centered, minimum flow is achieved, and the rotor's alignment within the cam ring is concentric, meaning a shared center. The fundamental design flaw of all unbalanced vein pumps is that they are, by both nature and title, unbalanced. Regardless if the unbalanced vein pump is fixed or variable displacement, Notice how the shaft driving the rotor would experience an off-center load when providing pressurized flow to the system. Therefore, the shaft, mounting hardware, and bearings must be oversized for an unbalanced vein pump if they are to perform reliably and continuously. Balanced vein pumps solve this conundrum by using an elliptical or oval-shaped cam ring and two pairs of opposing ports. Note the opposed green ports serve as inlets and the opposed red ports serve as outlets. When the rotor spins counterclockwise, notice both inlet ports would see a region of increasing volume and execute the suction phase of a positive displacement pump. The extended veins serve to provide a clear and definite separation between the matching inlet and outlet ports, characteristic of a positive displacement pump. Oil trapped between the veins and elliptical cam ring is brought around to the matching outlet port and then deposited in a region of decreasing volume, executing the compression and exhaust phase of a positive displacement pump. Note since the balanced vein pump 
evenly distributes the inlet and outlet forces. The drive shaft, mounting hardware, and bearings of a balanced vein pump can be smaller and lighter in comparison to that of a comparably sized unbalanced vein pump. Note that balanced vein pumps are ordinarily only fixed displacement configurations. That's really all there is to the internal construction and basic operation of both unbalanced and balanced vein pumps. Let's disassemble some representative examples of both types and see if we can identify some of the constituent parts. Here's a manual unbalanced vein pump used for low pressure fluid transfer applications. When we remove the top half, we find a gasket forming the static seal between the two halves of the housing. We can remove the gasket and inspect for damage. Note the rotor is slightly off center and has three veins. We can remove the rotor, taking care to not let the veins drop on the floor. Note some vein pump disassembly procedures call for extreme caution since veins might be spring loaded. If they don't pop out and hit you in the eye, they will rattle down the nearest floor drain, never to be seen again. The cam ring isn't unusually scored or pitted, and both ports are unblocked. The rotor itself has three spring extended veins. The veins can be removed and inspected for damage. There you have it, the internal workings of an unbalanced vein pump, truly horrifying in its complexity. Here's a close up shot of the rotor. Here's a close-up shot of one of the spring-loaded veins. When the rotor and veins are reassembled and then reinserted into the cam ring, note the eccentricity of the off-center rotor inside the cam ring ensures the spring-loaded veins create regions of differential volume. As the rotor is turned clockwise, the inlet port seeds a region of increasing volume. This half of the unbalanced vein pump would therefore be performing the suction phase of a positive displacement pump. The extended veins serve to provide a clear and definite separation between the inlet and outlet characteristic of a positive displacement pump. Oil trapped between the veins and cam ring is brought around the outlet port and deposited in a region of decreasing volume as the rotor continues to rotate clockwise. This half of the unbalanced vein pump would therefore be performing the compression and exhaust phase of a positive displacement pump. Note, since the pump is by its nature unbalanced, the drive shaft would experience continual side loading. This particular pump, however, is meant for only low pressure manual fluid transfer applications, so the off axis loading would be negligible. Now let's examine the internal construction of a balanced vein pump. Removing the bottom housing, we find something known as a cartridge, where a cartridge is the rotor and vanes packaged inside the elliptical cam ring and capped off with port plates. A cartridge assembly makes repair and replacement of a vein pump an extremely simple task. The system can be locked out and tagged out, the old cartridge assembly removed, and a new one mounted in place, all without the ever-present possibility of dropping a vein down a floor drain. Additionally, Different sized rotor and cam rings allow the same pump to provide different displacement values per revolution. The rear port plate can be removed and we see exactly what we anticipated, a rotor with veins inside an elliptical cam ring. The cam ring can be removed. The rotor and veins can be removed. There you have it, the internal workings of a balanced vein pump, truly horrifying in its complexity. Here's a close-up shot of the elliptical cam ring with the rotor and vanes. Here's a close-up shot of the back port plate. Note the opposing pairs of inlet and outlet ports evenly distribute the load and ensure the shaft is never side-loaded. Here's a close-up shot of just the elliptical cam ring. Here's a close-up shot of the rotor with two of the vanes removed. Note these vanes aren't spring-loaded like the last example. These veins are forced outward by a small pin in the slotted rotor, continually exposed to pressure, which essentially does the same thing as a spring, and are as equally easy to get lost if you drop them. Alright, that's about it. Other lectures examine gear and piston pumps that exhibit notable differences in construction, operation, and performance. Until then, that's all I've got for you. In conclusion, this lecture discussed fixed displacement unbalanced and balanced vein pumps as well as variable displacement unbalanced vein pumps. We discussed the concept of operation, 
examined the inner workings, and identified constituent parts. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates. Thank <laughs> you.